Hi, hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sky, and today we are doing another episode of Makeup That I Want But I'm Not Gonna Buy. This is a very long standing series on my channel, and I haven't made a new episode in a while, so I thought I would gather some makeup that I really love the look of, but give you the reasons why I'm not gonna buy them. I'm gonna be putting the pictures up on this side of the screen here, and if I'm looking down, I'm just looking at the pictures on my phone. Rightio, where on earth do we, do we start with controversial? I don't know. <laughs> now you know what, since I mentioned it, we'll start controversial. So, um, hmm. This is the Ensley Rain Cosmetics Cold Moon Palette. Now, I'm gonna start talking about the palette and then I'm gonna give you reasons why I don't think I'll ever want to purchase from this brand. <laughs> so aesthetically, this palette, when I first saw it, I was like, that is absolutely incredible. The cool tones in there, the shimmery like taupey neutrals with a bit of rosiness and gunmetal. Like aesthetically this is such a stunning palette and very unique for my collection like if I were to own it and I was so tempted by this like I fully would have purchased it. However their palettes are fucking expensive and I mean like I'm pretty sure- let me check how much this is. Because I'm pretty sure to have to sell my left kidney for it. Okay, so the Cold Moon palette is £57.72. We'll round it up to 58 Um, 58 quid for a palette, that's- my limit on how much I'll spend on a makeup product is 50 And I prefer not to go anywhere near that mark because £50 is just a bit too much for me. <laughs> and that doesn't even count international shipping. I hear that their international shipping is like £20 on top of that, roughly. I will show you some swatches here from a uh, mutual in the community, Cine Reviews. And Cine swatches are like incredible. It's just, I, I wish, I wish I had this talent and skill. But don't these shadows look gorgeous? Like I understand why the palette is expensive. It is a bigger palette. It has like all the shimmers are essentially multi-chromes or duochromes and those are expensive to make so it makes sense. I have so many problems with Ensley Rain. <laughs> I'm only gonna scratch the surface of my issues with them because I don't want this video to be solely about you know this and it's also just not nice things that I don't- I just- Mm, they make me feel icky. So their brand name used to be a slur and uh, they changed it, which is good, obviously. Um, however, they still have the domain for their old brand name, which contains the slur and they still pay for it. And if you type in that link, it redirects you to their current page. Just get rid of the old web page. Why do you even want to be linked to the slur anyway? It was a slur against Romani people, which a lot of people don't know is a slur, so I mean, I understand. But at the same time, why are you keeping the URL? Like, nobody knows you as that brand name anymore, to my knowledge. From what I heard, they also refused to pay a creator that they literally made a palette collab with, and they only said after the fact that they weren't gonna actually pay them money and just give them store credit. This is something that I've heard. I don't know if this is, like, completely true, but it. Ew. <laughs> Can you imagine like making a whole ass product for a brand and then they're like, no, 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 you're not getting anything. Especially because they are a popular brand and they can afford to pay. Like, come on. And the one for me personally, which is the biggest, I mean, the slur is like quite a huge factor, but at least, at the very least, they changed the name. But the thing that continuously pisses me off about Ensley Rain is the fact that all of the artwork they use on their palettes is AI generated. <laughs> now, I think it's quite... I'm quite passionate about, like, being anti-AI art. I put it in quotes because it's not fucking real art. There are tons of videos on YouTube going into the depths and details of why AI art is so harmful to the art community and to artists, but I'll just briefly touch on it quickly. So AI art, basically, like, you can type something in, like, fairy mushroom girl and it will generate a picture of, of said thing. Now the issue is is that AI art takes images from other artists that are on the internet. It takes images and then generates something new like kind of mashes it all together and obviously this is art theft which is fucking bad. Now as a very creative person myself like I used to paint, I used to draw and now I draw on my face as my creative outlet it's just a slap in the face. Like, why the fuck would you use AI art art 
for your packaging. You can afford to pay an artist, pay a real artist, stop stealing, like, using AI and stealing art. They did mention that they have an, they have an artist that uses AI, that, like, makes art for the AI or something. But then what's the point of AI? Just pay the artist. Like, just pay the artist to make something. And I'm not gonna lie, if you rely on AI to create your art pieces, like, if that is, like, a big crutch of it, you're not an artist. <laughs> you, you just copy-paste shit. I understand if you need, like, a background for something and you, like, can't be bothered to make something, like, huge, but that's different to actually using, like, the main elements of an art piece being just fucking stolen assets. <laughs> and their attitude towards people like calling them out for AI art is fucking disgusting. So they made a post talking about like, let's be honest. And they were talking about like how people said they're private labeled and sort of situation. Now I'm not gonna lie. I've not seen shit personally about people complaining that they are private labeled. A lot of brands are private labeled. That's not really a problem. The only time I find it a problem is if you claim to be handmade, completely handmade and you are just private labeling like that's just lying what are you doing but a lot of people in the comments are telling them like okay but are you gonna address the AI art thing and they did say that they will make a separate post on it as i'm filming this video they haven't made a statement or anything like an official like post they were liking comments of people like replying to those being you know raising the concern of the ai art thing they were they were liking comments of people being fucking nasty towards others and also liking comments that are like, I don't get why it's such a big deal, like, being a business owner is difficult. First of all, <laughs> first of all, it's really hard for me not to get, like, really passionate about this because, like, I know for a fact running a business is fucking difficult. I have a very small business, Rain Cloud Candles, like, behind me, as you can see. I make handmade candles. Literally everything about this business I do by myself. But I still have an artist that makes the packaging, like the designs of the packaging. And like, I don't care how expensive it is. Just do something simple. Do something really fucking simple. Pay an artist or at the very least compensate them. A lot of artists would do things like in exchange for like products just for the sake of them having things in their portfolio that they can use in like other professional settings. Like, hey, I did work for this business. That looks really good on an artist. You gotta compensate like an artist regardless. So it really pisses me off when people say like, oh, but it's really expensive to make packaging. Fuck off. If I can do it and I work minimum wage as a disabled person, they can too, and they've got money. <laughs> Let's say they actually can't afford an artist. You don't need extravagant packaging. Do something really simple, really like sleek. Like for an example, I love Blend Bunny. I love their formula, fantastic. This is the most simple packaging you could ask for. It's just like a PNG of mermaid scales. It says the brand name, says the name of the palette, what's inside it. This is so simple. However, the contents are what really matters. But the simple packaging is fine. The way that they've been acting, I don't want to ever fucking support them. It's just a slap in the face to all like artists and creatives out there. Like, I'm so sorry, but if you are in a creative industry, you have to be creative. Don't take shortcuts, you silly bitch. Kind of fitting that I went really heated because I do have literal flames drawn on my eyes today. It's like I woke up and chose violence. <laughs> yeah, that's my most controversial one. Um. I don't care if you support Ensley Rain, like, some of my favourite creators on- in this community, like, do work for Ensley Rain, they do, like, you know, they get PR from them, do swatches and that sort of thing, and like I showed you, like, Cine Reviews, like, her swatches are absolutely gorgeous, and I- I don't care, like, if you support them, like, in my opinion, it doesn't say anything about you as a person, I just personally don't feel comfortable supporting a brand that it just- dabbles in art theft. Okay, let's move on to something fucking goofy. <laughs> if you told me that there would be a Garfield makeup collab with Glamlight, I would be shocked. I mean, okay, with Glamlight, not so much because they have some weird ass collabs. But Garfield is one of my comfort characters. I adore Garfield. I have seen every like bit of Garfield media that there is to see in the world. I 
wish I had like some of the Garfield plushies and like the old Garfield phones. Garfield is just like my boy. I love him so much. And the fact that Glamlight came out with a collab with the big fat boy is just... <laughs> I love it. Look, look at it. Now I'm not gonna lie, I want some of this collection purely because it is Garfield. Like the eyeshadow palette is nice, but it's not something that I would really want to use. The trio is alright. The main things that I actually want from this collection are the lip scrub and like lip mask, which I think they're donut flavoured, which it's funny because I actually don't like donuts that much. I'm not a big fan of donuts. They're just too sweet for me. Now that I say that, would I actually want these? I, th I just want them because it has Garfield on them. And also this makeup bag looks incredible. <laughs> it's got like the comic strips of like the Jim Davies like comic strip pieces and like it looks like a really good size and I actually don't have a big makeup bag. So realistically, like, yeah, this is the thing that I really want. But I don't want to pay shipping and all of that just for a makeup bag. Like, that feels a bit silly for me. But yeah, it's a goofy one. I love Garfield. He makes me very, very happy. Let me know if you actually buy anything from this collection and if it's good. Um, I'll live vicariously through you. And also if you love Garfield. Okay, this is a really random thing. Um, because it's something complexion related and normally I never talk about uh, complexion in these, um, videos. But this is the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo CC Cream. This is kind of like duping the IT Cosmetics CC Cream, except with a significantly better shade range. I really desperately want to like e.l.f. products. I really, really do. But every single e.l.f. complexion product I have used, and I've used many back in the day, and even like recently, like I bought the, um, I bought the e.l.f. Uh, Stay All Night Microfine Setting Mist, because this is apparently meant to be a dupe of my literal godsend Urban Decay All Nighter. This literally has the tiniest amount, like I have maybe like one application left of it and I've been savouring it. And I was like, you know what, this is cheap why not give it a go? It's just not the same. It's not the same. And also this breaks me out. Do I still use it though? Yes. Unfortunately. <laughs> I really should just give this to one of my friends, but like all e.l.f. complexion products that I've tried break me out. They irritate my skin. And I've seen the finish of this like CC cream and it looks awesome. Like the coverage is really good. It looks like it's got a really nice finish on the skin. And I feel like an elf is so, so well priced. Like, I wish that their products worked for my skin, but like, I don't know if I want to risk it because I have a strong feeling that it would break me out. It, it truly breaks my heart. I just realized we have two palettes in this video that are virtually the same, so I'm going to have to split them up in this video. Uh, let's talk about the one that I kind of want a lot more. And this is from Unearthly Cosmetics. I think this is called the Sorcerer palette? Something like that. This one. Oh my god. Uh, Riley Seeking Shifts like has said that this is one of her favourite palettes and every time she does a beautiful like grungy like neutrally like rusty look it's always with this palette and I'm just like you fucking bitch. In a nice way because I'm like you bitch I really want it now. Also Millie Bad to the Brow has this and really likes it too and the textures and just the colour story it's just so me. Like I feel like I have two sides when it comes to makeup. I have like cute fun pastels like wholesome fairy bits and then I have like grunge deep like like moss like I live in a cave sort of makeup. And this palette is just gorgeous, but I truly do not need this in my collection. I have palettes that have these tones in them, like Geology Wheat Belt, Geology Pilbara. I have like Beauty Bay Wilderness. I have palettes that literally have this color story. And also Unearthly Cosmetics, their shipping is really expensive to the UK. And this is not a cheap palette either. Like, again, let me have a look at the palettes. It's called Sorcerer Smoke. That's the name of the palette. And it is £52. The shimmers look really lovely. It's just, I just think about this palette so often. 
but I just can't justify it. I really can't. Let's move back to something a bit silly and also like another brand that I literally don't want to touch with a 10 foot pole, but I, I gotta give credit where credit's due. This collection's fucking cute. It's the She Glam Care Bears collection. Now, I loved Care Bears as a kid. I, oh, that, I, I had a few Care Bears that I really liked. Like I actually had a plushie of, I don't remember its name for the life of me, but it was a Care Bear that was pink and it had a rainbow on its tummy because my favorite color as a child was rainbow. That's literally what I would tell everybody. And some reason, some reason everyone else knew that I was queer before I even realized. I wonder why, Sky. <laughs> yeah, I had that Care Bear. One of my other favorite Care Bears was the blue one with like the rain cloud on it. I love the Care Bears animation, like the old school animation. Like this newer Care Bear stuff, like, I don't know. I'm not really a big fan of like 3D animation. Like, it, I don't know, for some reason, it's not really for me. I prefer like the 2D, like old school animations. Anyways, this collection just makes me think of my childhood and like how it just, just the cuteness of it. And I'll be honest, why the fuck, as much as it sticks with the theme, why the fuck would you make a powder product or just any makeup product have this fluffy exterior packaging. Like that is a recipe for disaster. Do you know how fucking dirty that's gonna get? But they, they really stuck to the bit. They really did stick to the bit. And the ones, like the thing from this collection that I want the most are the blushes, especially that like one at the very bottom of this picture. I don't know its name, but it's like the deepest shade because it's kind of like a, like a dusty deep rose. Oh my God, like that is, that is a sky shade through and through. I think most of us know why Shein is not a great company by any stretch of the imagination. They are arguably one of the worst fast fashion companies out there. Like they are fucking terrible for the environment and stuff like that. And wildly unethical, so fucking unethical. They also steal from a lot of small indie fashion designers. So again, I've got, I've got, if I see like art theft of any capacity, I'm just fucking right hook. I'm not gonna delve deep in why Shein is not Slay and She Glam by proxy is not, but I will give them credit where credit is due. This is cute. It could be stolen to, for all my knowledge, but aesthetically it's cute. Now this next palette is a Blend Bunny palette. I love Blend Bunny's matte formula, especially they're one of my top favorites. And this palette, I want to love it really badly, but I just can't <laughs> for several reasons. It's the Sickly Sweet palette. First of all, this is the palette where they like derailed from their usual layout of like, you know, color stories in columns. And I know that they have said previously that like, we shouldn't always expect that from them because they like to change things up. But I'm sorry, this is just an ugly ass layout. Like this is just fuck ugly. <laughs> Why would you? Like, it makes me like itchy. Like I, I hate it. Genuinely chaotic layouts like this really trigger my OCD. And I don't, I'm not one of those like, I've got OCD, I like things in order. No, I've got crippling OCD that I'm fucking medicated on and it's chronic. It's horrible. You don't want OCD. Can we stop romanticizing it? And this just upsets me greatly. Like this image just makes me really uncomfortable to look at, just seeing how fucked everything looks like it I can't deal with it I, I need to look at the the rearranged image hang on one of my friends Gina faces by Gina actually made her palette magnetic and showed how to like change it up and swap things out and honestly god bless you Gina Gina you are doing you are doing the lord's work this is the palette rearranged from Gina's video and like this is just much nicer to look at. And I am a self-proclaimed pastel goblin. I fucking love pastel shadows. They're my favorite, like my favorite sh shades to wear on my eyes. And while I feel like this is a really good catch-all for pastels, and people have said this is like the best pastel formula alongside Shroud Creepy Cute, and I love sh my Shroud Creepy Cute palette. It is so fucking good. However, another reason why I wouldn't want to buy this, one, obviously, I would need to rearrange this and I don't really have the time or energy to do that because 
It's a lot of fucking work. I don't like big palettes. I decluttered the Blend Bunny Surge palette from my collection because it was just too big and I would get overwhelmed looking at it and it made me really anxious. Like I just don't... Maximum I can do is 24 pans and to be honest a lot of the... I'm not gonna... I can't be bothered to get it out. Um, the Lua palette from Blend Bunny is the biggest palette that I would go for because it's got really good variety without being too overwhelming. I feel like if they made Sickly Sweet into like a 9 pan or a 24 pan or even like a 12 pan palette I would totally buy that. And the last things I'm going to be mentioning are from the same collection but two separate like sort of categories. So this is the Melt Cosmetics and Bailey Sarian uh, Fatally Yours collection. Now every time I see Bailey Sarian's name I want to call her ba Bailey Caesarian but I'm not gonna lie this collab is probably one of the best collabs Melt has ever done because this is so fitting. Like Bailey is such a cool content creator. I used to watch her videos but I'm not really like like I appreciate like the work that she does and her makeup artistry is gorgeous um but the true crime and makeup thing it, it doesn't really sit right with me personally like I feel like it's a bit odd seeing someone do a smoky eye whilst also talking about the brutal acts that someone has committed against an innocent victim I don't know it feels a bit odd to me but going back to the makeup the palette is absolutely stunning. I love that it's an all matte palette from Melt because I have had many Melt palettes in the past. I had Millennial Pinks, uh, Smoke Sessions and I think Radioactive and I think another one. I don't remember. They have all since been decluttered from my collection because I'm not gonna lie Melt's formula is mid-tier at best but I found that their mattes were far superior to their shimmers. Their shimmer shadows are genuine shit <laughs> and I, I'm not gonna apologize for saying that. Their shadows for my standard garbo. Fucking garbo. They just wouldn't stick to the eyes. They were really thin and if they did stick they'd look really chunky and textured and not textured in a good way like textured like my skin was literally like flaking off sort of kind you know. So I am glad that this palette is all matte because I think that is just their best formula and from what I've seen this formula is a little bit different to their normal formula because it looks a lot more like creamy and like smooth and pigmented. It's just not really a brand that I would trust. They're not a brand that I really am interested in anymore because of how much I just dislike their palettes and also their palettes have gone moldy in some of the shades and I just don't like that. I don't like mold. I'm, I'm very terrified of mold but I can't lie Every time I see this Bailey Seri and Fatally Yours palette, I just want it. The colour story is fucking breathtaking. The imprint in the pans, the embossing in pans, I am a slag for. Like, but again, these are shades that I do have in my collection. I really don't need to spend melt prices to get this. And the last thing we're going to be talking about is also from the Melt Bailey Caesarian Fatally Yours collection and these are their bullet lipsticks. These colours man, except for that like really pale pink, that's not for me, that's literally not my colour in the slightest, but the brownie grungy shades? Are you kidding me? Especially like the middle shade and the like Kaka brown, like that like yellowy orange brown. <sighs> Those look really, really, really good. And the imprint on the lipstick has the same imprint of the um eyeshadow palettes. And on the tip it has like um Bailey's lips and like with her piercing and stuff. And it, that's so cute. These colours are wonderful. But again, I really don't think I need them in my collection. I'll be honest, if I saw that like lighter, like yellowy, orangey toned brown, I don't know the name of that one in this picture. I just got this picture from one of their reels. <laughs> um, if I saw that one on a sale, I would be very tempted. I probably would buy it because it is just nice and I don't think I have a shade like that in my collection at the moment. But yeah, big congrats to Bailey and Melt for this collection. Like honestly one of the prettiest collab collections I have seen. And that my friends wraps up this makeup that I want but I'm not gonna buy video. I do apologize that it kind of got a little bit heated and a bit controversial <laughs> in this one. Um, I just have a lot of strong opinions when it comes to, uh, you know, ethics in art. 
and that sort of situation. Do let me know what are some makeup products that you really want but you're not gonna buy. There could be old releases, new releases. Do let me know. If you'd like to see more makeup content from me, you can follow me on my Instagram. It's Fairy Sky right here. I post all my looks there and I'm active on there every single day. And if you'd like to support me further, I do have my own small business, Rain Cloud Candles Co. We're a small queer owned business based in the UK and we make handmade candles and wax melts. The link to shop will be down below along with our social media if you'd like to support us. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I'd love to have you here. And as always, stay safe, wash your hands, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.